Uh, hi, my name is Tack Tara. I am uh, 27 years old. Um, I live in the Kansas City area. Um, I've been working on music since I was about 12 years old. Uh, primarily, uh, it had to do with uh, electronic music. It took many years uh, before I decided that I wanted to get into more of the electronic rock uh, aspect of it with uh, guitars and adding some, uh, some power and emotion to my style of music. Um, I began uh, teaching myself uh, keyboards, uh, learning the techniques and, and your chord structures and uh, everything like that. Um, and then progressed throughout the years. Uh, and eventually I've uh, self-taught myself how to play uh, keyboards, guitar, bass, uh, singing, um, mixing, mastering, uh, everything in the whole encapsulated uh, realm of music I've taught myself and, and decided that uh, you have to know every aspect in order to even try to make it as a musician in this day and age. Many, many, many years ago, uh, the nickname was given to me, TAC, and uh, I took it one step further. Uh, and the reason why I did is because um, when you're trying to develop a, a live band or anything that has to do with uh, publicity and, and uh, entertainment, you need to have a persona. Um, and uh, my everyday life me is not my band life me. Uh, there are definitely correlations between the two. Um, but uh, there are differences. Um, a lot of my uh, anger, animosity, and uh, hatred towards things gets more pushed towards the performance-wise uh, because I like uh, having having that anger that way. Uh, it makes everything better in life. Uh, everyday life is not, um, I hate the world and um, everyone sucks. But, um, and neither is my music to say, uh, you know, in that aspect. But it definitely... It was a uh, event for me, but I created Persona because I wanted people to take notice. You have to make sure that people are uh, taking notice of you. There are so many bands out there now, uh, whether they actually perform live, whether they're actually producing something quality-wise, they're there, and they're all trying to have that, hey, look at me, Persona. Um, I wanted to make sure that I stood out um, and that when people saw me, saw my name, uh, TAC, uh, that they went, what? What's your name? What? Um, rather than just a generic name where everyone will forget who you are. People do not forget my name. When I tell them my name's Tack, they immediately go, what's your name again? And I tell them again, and then they remember. Well, first off, in our genre of music that we actually do, um, which can be labeled many different ways, we prefer to call electronic rock um, because we pulled away from uh, what people would consider uh, industrial. I don't find any means that we're industrial, we're not gothic in any way. Um, but we do get lumped into that, and sometimes we get lumped into techno for the uh, people who really aren't into music. Um, but electronic is, rock is the way we want to go with it. But as far as aspect in electronic rock, it's very uh, small. Um, there aren't very many bands out there that would even remotely come close to uh, electronic rock in any, in any fashion or version. Uh, the other thing that's really difficult is um, getting um, getting enough people out to shows to make a consistent thing of it. Um, and it has nothing to do with uh, the style of music. It's more of Kansas City really isn't a prime location for um, big music scene. Uh, it's, it's not there. Uh, the city is not structured correctly, in my opinion, to be able to house a uh, strong music network, going to clubs, playing at venues, things like that. Uh, it's just way too uh, open of a city uh, and doesn't have enough people in it. Um, I would like to see it uh, grow uh, just in general, but most of the venues you will end up playing at in Kansas City are really subpar for producing a really well organized uh, live performance. Um, so it, it definitely leaves a lot to, uh, to want. Um, which, you know, we play shows, we play quite a few in Kansas City, but we also venture out of Kansas City quite a bit to... Uh, what else have you done? Uh, well, we've played um, down in Fayetteville, Arkansas. We've played um, Springfield, Missouri, uh, Joplin, Missouri. Uh, Springfield's got an amazing uh, live scene. It, lately it's been killed um, because of some legislation down there, but um, those are really good shows. You can get out to any college town. If you can get to a college town and play, uh, you're going to be better off. Uh, Lawrence, Kansas is a, is a good one uh, to play at, but just, you know, 
in downtown Kansas City. Um, there's only a couple venues that are the ones you want to get into. Well, that show is actually at the Beaumont Club. Uh, it's one of our uh, favorite places to play. Um, it's not a huge venue by any means, but it definitely can hold a lot of people. Um, now, uh, we play there about every six months or so. I try not to play the same venue uh, too often. Um, that way people will actually come out all the time. If you play the same venue every month, people are going to get bored. You're not going to get people to come out. But if you wait six months and, and uh, come up with new material each time, then people are going to come to see you. Um, as far as type of show, uh, it was just a, um, it was just a uh, national tour uh, coming through, and uh, we got picked up on it to open up for them, um, which is, is pretty commonplace for us. Um, we have a few promoters out there that uh, like to get a hold of us and ask if we want to open up for some national acts, which uh, we, we definitely do every single time. As long as there's no conflicting issues or anything like that. Okay. Um. She's kind of a part of that, and I was just wondering how, how, how does it feel to have that a part of your work? Well, it's great. I mean, to have your wife, the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with, uh, engaged in and something that you're so uh, so enveloped in uh, is, is a great thing. Um, every day, every day it's, a, it's a joy to be able to have her down here uh, running through stuff with us. Um, she's dependable. Uh, she kind of gets me. She kind of knows what I want. Which makes things a lot easier because now I don't have to go, hey, bassist, I need this, and they can't figure out what I want. She just knows. We're, we're in tune in that fashion that that I can give her a, a bass line that she's going to play live, and she just does it. Uh, whether whether I change my mind and I want her to play live bass uh, at one point, or if I want her to change over after she learned it on live bass on keyboard and play it bass wise, she just does it like that, which is which is a great thing. It keeps, uh, I think it keeps a band pretty close to um, when you've got um, two out of the four members are, are you know, related or married, uh, then we can keep checks on everybody else and not have to worry about each other. Zori Halo has been around since 2001. Um, it actually was a um, combination of two different bands uh, brought together and then eventually split back apart, but the name reta uh, was retained on my side. Um, as far as um, member-wise, uh, I have always been the core uh, contributor. Um, it's been uh, it's been that way since the start. Um, I do have people coming in out um, and adding uh, drum lines, guitar lines, bass lines, whatever. Um, but as far as uh, actual core member, I'm the only one. Um, I do have uh, our current drummer uh, Zeke. Uh, he does add drum lines in. Um, uh, uh, Skylar, my wife, she actually only plays bass live and keyboard live. Uh, she is not an actual studio contributor, which is fine, and, and that's some of the stuff that we had come across. Um, right now, um, I've got a guitarist named Sin, and she'll be doing some uh, live vocals, uh, or some female vocals on the new album um, for our tenure. Um, but as far as um, all that goes, it's been kind of a, a bumpy ride with uh, keeping live members. Uh, we've probably gone through five, six different guitarists through the ten years. And, and that's okay because that's the way it was designed. I, I made it so that um, 
if I lost a guitarist for whatever reason or uh, timing issues for live shows and stuff happened that I could bring somebody else in immediately. Um, and that's the way I kind of designed it, uh, is to be safe on my end. A lot of bands have all their members uh, as a core group, and when you lose your bassist, you're done. And then you got to start a new band name, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I knew from the beginning that, um, in 2001, that I, I wasn't going to be keeping everybody that I had at that time to play live. Uh, the worst uh, experience we've ever had overall um, is we had two dates back to back in uh, Springfield, Missouri and uh, Joplin, Missouri and uh, we drove to Springfield to find out that the venue uh, had canceled the date um, and didn't inform us so we drove all the way for nothing uh, and then so we went ahead and drove to uh, Joplin to uh, play the next night's date and when we get there we found out uh, that venue had shut down for two weeks, <laughs> had been shut down. Um, so, you know, you waste you waste uh, many hours of driving. Uh, we're definitely not mainstream. Um, okay. our, our style of music definitely doesn't allow us to become uh, a mainstream style band, which is fine. And, and um, when I chose this path, I, I chose it with the understanding that I'm going to enjoy what I do. I'm not worried about becoming famous um, by changing what I want to sound like, what I want to produce um, but as far as um, what Kansas City needs uh, needs to do to uh, I guess develop their live scene um, or just their music scene in general um, I don't know that that's a tough one uh, definitely the city uh, would have to grow um, but I think uh, the caliber of venues to play live would have to increase um, for some reason, venues believe that uh, you can walk in and five seconds later have all your equipment set up, uh, given if you're an acoustic you know, band and you have one acoustic guitar and a singer. Sure, you can walk in and do whatever you want, but when you walk in with three keyboards, three guitars, a bass, you know, drum kit, um, you've got your own board, you've got your own technology in there, um, it takes a little time, especially with lighting. Um, I think they forget that um, you're performing. They think that you're just kind of a, a background to get them in there to buy alcohol. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm really against playing 21 Up in shows uh, as much as I possibly can uh, because they're not worried about you. They're worried about getting the alcohol sales and you're just trying to draw crowds. Um, the other thing I've noticed as of lately, um, more and more promoters are going towards the... Uh, um, it's almost a pay-to-play type scenario. Um, you're not actually handing them money, but they make you work for it. Um, they will give you tickets and they say you have to sell this many tickets. So you're out there uh, whoring yourself out, um, trying to get as many tickets so that you can get a better position playing in the lineup uh, rather than playing at 6 p.m., you're playing at 10 p.m., so forth and so on. Uh, the other thing that's really big right now in Kansas City is Battle of the Bands, and I refuse, absolutely refuse to play any Battle of the Bands um, I've done it twice, um, and uh, the first time we headlined, we sold uh, plenty of tickets to do that, and the second time, um, because they kind of screwed everybody over and changed the date and the times and stuff, uh, didn't sell quite as many tickets, so we played earlier in the night, which isn't even the problem. The problem is, is that when you walk in, uh, you're like cows to them. Uh, they want you to shuffle on stage and shuffle off, and they only give you... <laughs> They only give you about 15 minutes um, to set up and take down. That's including the other band who's taking their stuff down. So if it takes them 10 minutes to get their crap off stage, you've got five minutes to get yours on stage and whatever they consider a sound check, which is not a sound check, um, they actually only allow you to have like a few seconds for that. So you just go with it. I mean, you just get up there, make sure your stuff is actually producing sound and wing it. 
as far as Kansas City getting getting um, popular in the music scene, um, I think uh, venues need to start bringing more acts in. Uh, I don't think there's enough national acts or regional acts coming through. Um, when regional and national acts do come through, uh, they need to allow for local acts to open up for them more. Um, that's how you're going to grow a local scene, is by allowing these local bands, who, mind you, you, you need to get local bands that are talented enough to be able to open up for these national acts, but get them out there, get them playing, because if you don't have a local band playing in front of a national act, these local acts are only going to see 50 people, 100 people at a time at most. You get them in there and 5,000, 10,000 people see them, I mean, that's going to boost it.